I want to keep focus on this crazy hypocrisy that we're seeing, which is on complete full display. 50 migrants obviously touched down in Martha's Vineyard. Suddenly, humanitarian crisis. We can't house these people. We don't have the resources. We must do everything. And then they turn around and ship them right out of the so-called sanctuary area. Yet there was no crisis when our president sneakily flew thousands, tens of thousands of migrants all over the country, releasing them into the individual American backyards. There's been no acknowledgement of a humanitarian crisis at the southern border, yet fentanyl has been freely flowing through our southern border, killing 100,000 people last year, leading to this crazy overdose epidemic in the United States. But remarkably, everyone sees this. This was obviously a sadistic lie. Not only did those responsible for this stunt know that there was no housing and no employment awaiting the migrants, they also very intentionally chose not to call ahead. These wonderful people who find themselves plane wrecked on our island, I have a message for all of them. You are not alone. We have your backs. She seems like a lovely person. Now, the crisis of these migrants, it, this has been completely ignored for months, but you send 50 to somebody. These people in Martha's Vineyard have signs welcoming this. And instead of, you know, promoting legal immigration, Democrats are just doing the complete opposite, allowing these people to enter the country freely, completely recklessly, with no bounds. You know, they get a free phone sometimes, and then maybe they'll report back for their court date. Yet suddenly, the left has their backs. All right, for more on this, let's welcome in former New York Congressman and Newsmax contributor Michael Grimm. Also with us, former Nevada State GOP chairwoman and Republican strategist and Newsmax contributor Amy Tarkanian. Also with us, Trump 2020 foreign policy advisor and Newsmax contributor George Papadopoulos. Okay, uh, from 2016, obviously. Uh, let's, uh, let's travel back in time a minute here, okay? So, Mike, it, it's October, and the first word of the president's secret, you know, late-night migrant flights has surfaced. There's no hysteria, no mention of crisis, yet, and this is tens of thousands of them, yet 50 migrants arrive in Martha's Vineyard. Suddenly, oh, everything's, everything's on fire. Carl, good morning again. Um, listen. I've said it for many, many, many years, okay? Here's the reality to the woke, left, liberal lunatic that are basically destroying our country. Right. They love the poor. They love minorities. They love all of the downtrodden until they're at their <coughs> home or their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's always been that way. And I'm hoping that this outstanding maneuver by, you know, Governor DeSantis finally starts to show in these neighborhoods, in the poorer neighborhoods where the minorities live, that they've never that they're being lied to mm. and that they've been pawns all this time because this is all this is proof. The minute that these migrants got to Martha's Vineyard, they were already figuring out to get buses to get them out and put them on a military base. They do not want them. So the sign welcoming everyone is nothing more the nonsense and yeah, tomfoolery, and we, we can't listen to it anymore. Tom, what did you call it? Shenanigans. That was the word you used in the seventh. <laughs> I love that word. Now I'm using tomfoolery. Yeah, Amy, I mean, but DeSantis, he's doubling down. This is why I love this guy. He's like, hey, look, guys, we're going to do more of this. You're, you, I'm, I'm going to give you everything that you've called for for the last few years. Do you think policy is going to change at all? Well, I certainly would hope so, but it seems pretty dismal underneath this administration being so hell-bent on wanting to still turn a blind eye to what what they've created. They've created this chaos. They've created this humanitarian crisis. And on another network I was watching um, yeah. earlier this morning, uh, there were a couple more buses that actually arrived in front of the vice president's home. And when the people exited the buses, there was no one there to greet them necessarily, except for you just heard everyone saying, you know, run this way, run this way. And they were running away from the cameras and they were just dispersing throughout yeah. the neighborhood. You know, this is this is a total dereliction of duty of protecting uh, right. the American citizens. And you mentioned fentanyl. I'm a mother of four. There was a 13 year old in Bakersfield, Jeez. California, that recently brought what was called Skittles, but it was fentanyl to school. This is very scary. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy. Uh, George, I want to get you in on on, on the, the main topic here that I, that is just so important. It's not making headlines because mainstream media chooses and loves to ignore this. A newly unsealed court filing revealing Igor Dechenko, 
became a paid FBI informant in March 2017. This is like months after the Fed started questioning him over his involvement in the dossier for former President Donald Trump that we all remember was complete garbage and they couldn't make anything out of it. You have been front and center in the middle of this entire scam, and that's what it is, it's a scam. Talk to us about the development. Is this, is this an FBI paying for his loyalty or actually he was an informant? Well, uh, good morning, Carl, and uh, thanks for having me. Look, uh, what this essentially is uh, showcasing to the American public and the world is that the FBI and uh, the politicized DOJ and the Obama administration at the time were really hell-bent on uh, preventing a smooth transition of power from one administration to the next. Uh, what Igor Danchenko, the significance of uh, Igor Danchenko is really all about is the following. This is uh, John Durham's uh, third indictment and his second trial. Igor Danchenko is about to go on trial next month. We're slowly but maturely getting an intimate vantage point into this onion of corruption that spread its tentacles throughout the United States and the world between 2015 and 2017 when the FBI run up, was run amok and was spying on the Trump campaign. And it's showing that the FBI was never really interested in collecting or investigating dirt on President Trump or his campaign, but they were there to plant it. And yeah. that's why Igor Danchenko uh, is so critical to what was going on, because he was the key source of Christopher Steele. He was Christopher Steele's basically uh, bag man that resulted in the Steele dossier, that resulted in the spying on the campaign. Now, up until recently, the only thing we knew about the Steele dossier was that it relied on bought and paid information by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Yeah. We didn't understand that the FBI itself was involved with Dunchenko. So when I th when I think that this was entirely premeditated and not spontaneously yeah. uh, erupted in July 2016, this is what I mean by that. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. And yeah, you bring up an interesting point that most people have forgotten. The FBI literally spied on a presidential campaign a candidate. I mean, it's insane to me. I wish we had more time for this. Amy Tarkanian, Michael Grimm, George Papadopoulos, appreciate you being here. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.